Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, I feel like I'm really loud. Is there any way somebody could turn me down just a little bit? I'd appreciate that. How's that? Is that better? Okay, better? Okay. Well, good morning and welcome to St. John's. Everything that you need today for worship is in your bulletin. The words to the hymns can be found in the red hymnal in the pew rack in front of you. So let us stand and prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna and the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, it is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn for our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life. And feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Let us join in the prayer of the day. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Christ is Made the Sure Foundation.
of Solomon in Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning at verse 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning at verse 7. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between their present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fifth chapter beginning at verse 21. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many conditions, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling. 
fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came to the leader's house and said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him but Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Littles here today, but yet I'm still going to share the children's message, or what I would like to say, maybe some bad moments. So as you can see, I am holding something. It's very soft, and it's very squishy, and it's one of my favorite stuffed animals. I know I'm probably too old for a stuffed animal, but honestly, it is just the best thing. It's a frog, and I got it for my birthday, for my daughter, Lauren. And these squish mammals are like the best thing. Because when I am feeling down, or when I need an extra squeeze, or an extra hug, or I'm feeling like I just need that extra comfort, I will curl up on the couch with my squish mammal, and I will just hug it and squeeze it, because it is absolutely the best. And maybe there's something that you have in your life that you grab onto, that you touch, when you are feeling like you just need that little extra. In today's reading from the Gospel, we heard about the woman that, was, that went to touch Jesus' cloak, and she was healed, and she was made to feel better. And then the little girl, was Jesus took her hand, and he touched her, and she was healed. And that's what Jesus can do for us. He touches us in ways that can heal us, that can bring us comfort, that can bring us peace and joy. And when we feel that, we are able to share that with others. So let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for always being with us and bringing us comfort and joy and peace when we need it the most. Help us to be able to touch others with your love and all that we do. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel reading from Mark is one of the most moving stories in Scripture and of Jesus' healing power. Jesus healed many people, and touch was an important part of his ministry. The Gospels are full of examples of people being healed by either them touching Jesus 
or Jesus touching them. The woman in the crowd that we just heard about had suffered for 12 long years from some sort of bleeding. Doctors were of no help, and she had spent all of her money, but still there was no cure. She was considered to be an outcast of society and ceremonially unclean and rejected by others in her community. She didn't feel worthy to face Jesus, so she crept up to him in the crowd, nudging her way to get closer to Jesus so that she could touch his cloak. Because she knew if she touched Jesus, that he would heal her. And then, when she touched Jesus, Jesus knew immediately that the power had gone out of him, and he knew that someone had touched him. Now, he could have been very upset by this, because people were pushing in on him in the crowd. Yet he wasn't. He turned to her with love and compassion. And knowing that and hearing about that was a beautiful statement of love and compassion for this woman. He even acknowledges the woman by calling her daughter such a sweet, loving endearment to someone that he did not know. Jesus didn't reject her. Jesus showed compassion to this woman, and he cared about this woman. The reading then goes on to talk about the little girl, and she was one that had been sick, and Jairus had gone to Jesus asking for Jesus to go to the little girl to make her well. But he wasn't able to do that immediately, and so the little girl died. And when he finally got to the, the synagogue leader's home, and he took the little girl by the hand, the little girl woke up, and she was well. So why do you think touch was so important in Jesus' ministry? It wasn't necessary for Jesus to physically touch people to heal them. He easily could have commanded them to be healed. Jesus never told, or was never told what was wrong with people. He just knew. So why didn't he just heal them? Instead of taking the time to be with them, to touch them, to show love and compassion to them. And he didn't care what the sickness was. He didn't care who they were. He didn't care that they were an outcast. He just wanted to show love and compassion to those that were hurting, to those that needed healing. The power of touch by a doctor or a ther therapist, even today, enhances healing. Touch allows us to interact with others and our world. It is very important to a human's well-being. And touch has been found to convey compassion from one human to another. It is proven that babies born prematurely or have been hospitalized following their birth respond better to treatment when they are held by their parents and caregivers. Massage therapists can relieve pain, speed recovery from injury or surgery, and even reduce stress. And if you've ever had a massage, you can attest to this. And I have, and it is true. A few weeks ago, we gathered with my family to celebrate my, six, my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. And we had not gathered together as a family for a really, really long time. And it was wonderful to be able to be together, to embrace each other, 
to share love, to share our joy, and just be together. We are a family of huggers. That's just who we are. So being able to be together and hug everybody was wonderful. And during COVID, we weren't able to do that. And it was actually painful not to be able to embrace those that we loved. In today's world, touch must be always proper and appropriate. A gentle embrace or a hug, holding one's hand or cuddling with loved ones, conveys the message louder than words ever could that you care about that person. It gives encouragement and hope during difficult times. We also can be touched by the Holy Spirit, and that is when we feel God with us in the midst of our joys and challenges in life. How has God touched you? What does it feel like to you when God is with you and when God is in your heart? How would you describe it? Maybe it is a peace or a calmness that comes over you when you are in the midst of some challenging, difficult times, when you're afraid or when you're anxious, or a feeling of joy when something happens and it brings happiness to your life. Feeling God's presence with you when you need it the most. Feeling God with you when you are at worship, when you're out in the woods or by the river or fishing or all the things that you enjoy doing. Maybe it's an actual physical sensation of his touch on your heart or somewhere on your body when you know that he is with you. When we come to God in faith, we are healed by the touch of Christ. To sit in God's presence, to pray, to worship, we can feel God's presence. We are all sinners. We are all unclean. We are not perfect people. And we all have icky things in our lives. Sometimes we don't know if we can face God because of it, because of what we've done. Maybe you even feel like the woman in today's reading, feeling like you're not worthy, uncertain about God's love for you, feeling rejected by others, and questioning if you are worthy of God's grace. Know this, you are worthy, and God loves you, and he cares for you. And when we come to Jesus with our imperfections, he touches us and gives us grace, and he embraces us with his love. Having Jesus in your heart, having Jesus touch your life, eases the burdens, eases the challenges and the difficulties. As God gives us opportunities, we too can extend grace and show compassion to others through a gentle touch that conveys dignity and value. <laughs> the simple healing power of the human touch goes a long way to remind hurting people for our care and our concern for them. Jesus offers hope, healing, and new life to all that come to them in faith. And by faith, we need to reach out to Jesus, recognizing that he is reaching out to us to heal us and renew us by touching us. He wants to touch us so that through us, he can touch others. Amen.
Please stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of the world, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God and do prayer. God of healing, help us in our beliefs to overcome our prejudices, mistrust of each other, and overcome the darkness that invades our souls and blocks out the sun. Help us to understand we need to keep our eyes on you as we, your people, pray. Strengthen our faith. God of all, this world you created of our home has suffered because of our ignorance and mismanagement of the natural resources you provided for our sustenance. Give us the knowledge and guidance to be better stewards. As we, your people, say, strengthen our faith. God of comfort, as we ask you to protect those who suffer abuse and encourage those who lack hope, Bless doctors, nurses, medical assistants, and all who provide medical care. Bless the hospice workers who bring comfort to those in life's transition. Comfort those who grieve and bring healing to the sick. Today, we especially pray for Anne, Bentley, Beverly, Brian, Carol, Dave, Doris, Doris, Earl, Erna, Heavenly, Jean, Grace, Joyce, Kathy, Lois, Lori, Brian McCoyt, Peggy, Leo, Gwen Fisher and family, and all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. As we pray, as we, your people, say. God of love, your touch heals. Your presence brings peace to our souls. Your forgiveness provides comfort, and your grace is everlasting. Though we are undeserving of all your blessings, we give thanks. And we, your people, say. Strengthen our faith. God of us all, did we miss seeing you this past week? In the child who was crying because he was hungry, in the teenager who was drug addicted because we need, he needed an escape, in the worker who was injured and could not work, in the young mother who was overwhelmed with her responsibilities, in the retiree who was lonely. Did we miss our chance to serve any of these people as you would expect us to? Please forgive us. And we, your people, say, God of creation, thank you for the warm weather and the rain that we have needed. May we always remember all the good gifts come from you. And we, your people, say, God, be with us till we meet again. May your holy wings securely protect us. May our daily needs be provided. May we safely travel in our journeys. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
Almighty and merciful God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to sit for communion, and take your communion packet. As you peel back the layer to get to the wafer, Hear these words, the body of Christ given for you. As you peel back the layer for the juice, hear these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to take a moment of reflection as we give thanks for this great gift.
So we have a few announcements that I would like to highlight. Um, the Carly auction is coming up in July, and there is still a need for people to sign up. So please do that if you haven't done so. And start thinking about Sunday school. Um, that will be coming in the fall. And maybe mentoring with confirmation, if there's some things that you would like to help out with, please let the church office know there is a great need for people to step up and help with both mentoring and Sunday school. Pastor Sarah is on vacation, obviously, because I'm here. Um, she is moving into her new home this week, so she will be very busy taking care of all that. If for some reason you do need something from her, she is available, so please call the church office. Um, but please keep in mind that she is busy, so if it's an emergency, that is when you need to be contacting her. Um, so keep that in mind. I will be worshiping with you on Wednesday night, so if you would like to come again, I will be here. Uh, it's always great to see, see so many faces and people joining us for worship. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we can celebrate for today or this upcoming week? one guy right there that at the piano that's having a birthday, so he's not going to get out of it. <laughs> and I have to say that we are celebrating our anniversary this week, so I did mention it. <laughs> so let us just give a round of applause for birthdays. Great is thy faithfulness.
go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.